Hello there, and welcome to FilmThink. Have you heard of Studio Ghibli? Have you heard of this guy? I know, I know. Studio Ghibli is kind of underground. Well, bear with me as I talk to you about an extraordinary film, Princess Mononoke. Princess Mononoke is a captivating animated fantasy film directed and written by the renowned Japanese filmmaker Hayao Miyazaki. Released in 1997, the film unfolds in a mystical, ancient world where humans live amongst gods who walk the earth as ginormous animals. This film emphasizes the beauty of nature and demonstrates the destruction and pain that comes from hatred, violence, and the over-harvesting of nature. I could take the time to discuss the film's plot and its significance, but what I really want to talk about is how this film has influenced other works of art. This film has had a creative impact on so many writers, artists, and game designers, and its influence can literally be seen in so many beloved pieces of media. You may have seen a reference to Princess Mononoke and something you've watched and not even realized it. Star Wars Rebels is, of course, a Star Wars show set 15 years after Revenge of the Sith. It was created by Simon Kimberg, Carrie Beck, and Dave Filoni, who is most notably known for his success with the Cartoon Network turned Disney show, Star Wars The Clone Wars, and many other Star Wars related projects. The show centers on a ragtag team of rebels and their constant struggle against the tyrannical empire. In season four, the rebels encounter giant wolves who appear to have a supernatural connection to Ezra's home planet Lothal. These wolves seem to be in tune with the Force and nature. They obviously bear a striking resemblance to the wolf gods in Princess Mononoke. There is even a shot that appears to be taken directly from the film that references the spirit of the forest. Dave Filoni has time and time again openly expressed his admiration for Princess Mononoke and it is no surprise that he transformed this admiration into creations of his own. According to Filoni, even the beloved Clone Wars character Ahsoka Tano is directly inspired by San. Ahsoka's strong will, fighting style, appearance, and character are all reminiscent of the film's heroine. Before we continue, I think we need a little history lesson. In Japanese folklore, there were spirits that inhabited the trees of the forest. These spirits were called kodamas. Depending on the time and region, these spirits were believed to appear as trees or as old humans. According to Japanese folklore, these spirits made a distinct sound which could only be described as the delayed echoing sounds of the forest. Kodamas, of course, appear in Princess Mononoke as guides to Ashitaka and serve as a sign that the forest is healthy. And they're adorable. In Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, some very cheery and equally adorable spirits of the forest appear. They are known as Koroks. These Koroks hang out around the Great Deku Tree, which of course is very old, and act as guides. Well, actually half the time you are guiding them. It is very possible that the developers intended to reference the folklore iteration of these spirits, but with what I discuss next, I feel that it is equally possible that they were referencing Mononoke directly. 
In Tears of the Kingdom, there is a spiritual creature known as the Lord of the Mountain, who you can only spot in specific instances within the game. This spirit has the same mysterious and unpredictable nature as the film's Spirit of the Forest. And this isn't even the most direct reference to Mononoke. The most obvious homage to Princess Mononoke is in the plot of Tears of the Kingdom. In the beginning of Princess Mononoke, Ashitaka has his arm cursed by a boar god turned demon. He then sets out to find a cure to his hatred-afflicted arm. In the beginning of Tears of the Kingdom, Link has his arm cursed by an undead Ganon, and he spends the rest of the story trying to find a cure for himself. Hmm, sound familiar? Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konitsko, the creators of the widely beloved show Avatar The Last Airbender and its sequel series Legend of Korra, have openly stated how they were influenced by Studio Ghibli and Miyazaki's work as a whole. They purposely made their backgrounds out of real, tangible paintings and pieces of art in order to follow what they deem the Miyazaki rule. In a recent interview, Konitsko explained that there's this great Miyazaki rule, Everything you do at Studio Ghibli, even if it's going to end up 3D, has to start as a handmade piece of art. In regards to them being inspired directly by Princess Mononoke, the finale to the first season of Avatar is a great example. At one point in the show, the moon spirit, Twee, in the form of a koi fish, is killed by Admiral Zhao of the Fire Nation. In retaliation and in defense of the people of the North Pole, Aang becomes possessed by La, the water spirit, and absolutely wreaks havoc on the Fire Nation. This form of the water spirit looks almost exactly the same as the Nightwalker form of the forest spirit in Princess Mononoke. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. I, I hope you guys learned something new or something interesting. And if there are any movies you guys want me to uh, make videos about, uh, comment down below and I'll look into them. Uh, but yeah, I, I hope this video was visually appealing. Um, I'm still kind of new at this and I, I hope going forward um, I make even better videos for you guys. So thanks for watching.